Brother the shout was drowned out as a final bowl to destroy the oncoming Ravener. It was for the better, as it also deafened the clanging of his croziers on the floor from surprise. Something the problem. Chatlin brother, what did you do to your helmet? The sergeant turned around to reveal his helm. Had a single eye glowing through the full visor and a single crest jutting out from it. My helmet, Chaplin. I had recovered this helmet and what remained of the armor it came with, from the Abyssinia Crusade not a decade earlier. This is a relic. Is that so the sergeant's casual response put him off? You, too. Can you confirm this the two tactical marines that stood beside him turned? We can indeed, Chaplin Chromatus. Sergeant Rona was gifted with the helmet after leading its recovery effort and the traitor held stronghold of Cascador. It is not tainted, Chaplin. I have seen Tech Marine Essel's readouts, it is pure. Chaplin Chromatus grimly huffed. Fine. Now, Sergeant Rona coolly reloaded his belter. Would that be all you have to ask of me? Or is there a reason your Crozius is on the floor? The Chaplin refused to even humor Rona's question as he picked up his badge of office. If you're here to ask about the captain, then I saw him heading to the transit station to the west. I remember something about a pack of Hive Guard firing upon our land raider. Very well then, the Chaplin left in a fuss. One of the Marines asked, I wonder what bothered him so much. Chaplin Prometheus is just a stickler for the rules. Rona had begun walking. I recall something about a meeting with the Ultramarines of all chapters. Is that so? Sergeant the other Marine commented. Remember the time I was assigned to a minor defensive operation where we were assigned alongside the famous Sergeant Tillian? The operation? Ron amused upon it. Never considered Tillian to be so slavish to the Codex. I remember that the mission was presided over by a... Letras? Sounds about right. The three marines began marching over to the dilapidated ruins the Raveners crawled out from. If they were lucky, perhaps they could close it before something crawled out. The hole looked big enough to hold something. No larger than maybe a gaunt it seemed. Grenade. One of the marines handed Roller a frag grenade. With a swift pull and a drop, the grenade fell into the hole and then exploded, bursting the hole further out. None of the marines were moved, but neither did they seem pleased. Think they hid knowing that we would do such a thing Roller had considered the possibility. Either of you have a combi flame of the marine to his left lamented. I do, but say no more, brother Cashin. We will need an alternative. The other began glancing. Do you feel something, brother? It feels as though we are being watched. The sentiment should be followed. Rona started leaving. Fan out behind me. We guard each other's flanks. The suspicion proved to be well founded. As they walked through the ruins of what once was a proud chapel, the three marines heard countless chitters and snarls flooding the corridor. There was no doubt that Tyranids were still here. However, the bigger question was who was leading them, if any at all. Without a leader, they would be mindless drones, and they could swiftly fall back to perform an orbital cleansing. The three of them entered a hall where there were only three entrances. The noises were growing louder, they were ready to attack. How are your belt as the two tactical brothers gave a thumbs up as they leveled their weapons? Keep your eyes for anything tall. There would be no reason this many gaunts would be trying to assault us unless there was something guiding them. The gaunts began flooding in. Countless mobs of snarling monsters came clawing at them. And from the way they tried to separate the three, it was clear they were being guided. Rona began sweeping his chainsword around, Gaunt's getting cleaved before they could even reach him. Galitas, Kashan, Visuals nothing, Sergeant, I see nothing guiding them. Galitas threw his last grenade at the snarling tide and it did little to stem the tide. However, both marines realized that Rona's prowess opened a berth for them to hide. Impressive, Sergeant. Indeed, Rona flicked the Xeno blood off his chainsword. It seems that the machine spirit within this helmet is made for agility. I remember the calculation saying that I am moving about three times faster. Hopefully, I can put this to good use here. It seemed that the Emperor agreed with him. Brother, look ahead. A Tyranid warrior Galitas shouted over the din of bolt of fire. Rodder noticed the Tyranid, his upper hands bearing twin bonus wards. In his lower appendages, a set of claws. He smirked here might be a worthwhile challenge. He charged out ahead of his brothers to meet this monster head on, and his chainsword clashed with the beast's swords. Before the warrior could lash out with its claws, the sergeant leapt back and whipped out his bolter before it could react. Two shots, both missed and demolished a mall chunk of the gaunt horde behind them. Rona then began to slide under it, but before he could swing his chainsword again, the tyrannic countered him with its bonus wards again, with its claws supporting the swords. 
Rodus murked under his helmet. This creature was crafty. A switch off the controls and the chain's ward began spinning in reverse. As the momentum of the force swung it away, he leveled his bolter again and blasted again. It clipped the warrior in the shoulder. Using the window, he clubbed the tyrannid in the face with his bolter and then rolled back. He had this match won the warrior would not register the pain. It was too driven to sense it, but it would be weakened. That arm wouldn't be able to swing that sword anymore. The two charged again, and the warrior managed to grab the sergeant in a bear hug. Sergeant Ronnie watch and learn. Brothers Ronnie had his chainsword raised as the warrior did the same. The knights of Zion always seek opportunities. Always exploit your enemy's advantages both brothers realized what he meant in an instant. These were the teaching of the legendary chapter master Asnibal. Perhaps the finest chapter master of their chapter. Cashin fired his bolter at the warrior's skull, penetrating it. Impressed, Ronner then chopped his chainsword vertically. As he swept his chainsword over, he already smacked the bolt wedge within the tyrannid skull and forcibly punched it out of its skull and into another tyrannid. As it collapsed, so did the tyrannid's sense of order. Within the second, the horde began turning on each other as they lost all sense of order. Quickly, we need a grenade Ronner returned to his brothers. Curses, Galitas grumbled. I have just the thing. Cashin then grabbed a demolitions charge. I uncovered it while retreating from the offensive on the forge. Ronner already had his plan. Quickly, then the wall was destroyed and they filed out in the mayhem. As they did, they found themselves in the path of a crimson dreadnought. Brother Crusus. Glad to see you alive brother Ronner. Is that you the dreadnought rumbled? Indeed, he pointed at the chapel. Think you have enough missiles to demolish that the dreadnought turned its torso and leveled its mortis missile launchers. Hardly a challenge, brother a swarm of rockets were unleashed in seconds, and within seconds, the chapel, and the tyrannids within it, were crumbled. Be that all, brother? I would say yes, but, as if he were predicting it, he heard bolt of fire. Galitas and Cashin were running to the recently demolished chapel and without seeing a thing, he had an idea what they were facing a lictor. He was almost impressed, he finally got to face a hunter the same as he. Protect our brothers, he started back the way they came from. I will find this hunter myself. Ronner found himself trapped within a four-way intersection. He was amused at this hunter. At least he had some good cover. He read his chain sword. Nothing moved. He disliked that. After standing for so long, he decided to walk back. However, as he did, he reloaded his bolter with hellfire rounds. He could just smell the lictor ambushing him from behind. An unnatural squishing noise. Ronner had no need to see his feet. He knew something was coming soon. He dove to the floor, right behind him. Flesh hooks were extending. Were he a second slower, he may have been caught. A lictor finally emerged over him, its massive talons reaching over him. So, you call yourself a hunter the lictor merely flexed its claws. He raised his belter. Then I suppose this would be useless. Right it snarled. How about we try that? Three shots. To his amusement, the lictor dodged all three. As he kicked up. He saw the lictor stalking again, his massive talons clicking shut. Ronnie ran into the lictor and then raised his bolter to its tendril maw. He leapt back before the tyrannid's closing limb sheared his arms off and fired off some more shots. Both of them his hunter's lower elbows. Shocked, the lictor fled again, but Ronnie felt that this was not the end of it. He took off his helmet, revealing his short cut blonde hair and striking blue eyes. Perhaps the lictor would respond to better bait. I know you are still watching me, Zeno. He declared while dropping his chain's ward. I am not fleeing from you, but will you? A smirk. Perhaps you know nothing of honor, but I know you are not one to refuse a morsel when you see one. He shut his eyes. He focused his ears. Wherever that lictor would be, he knew his eyes would be the last thing to notice it. Another squishing noise. He dove to the side again, but he could feel the flesh hooks digging into his armor. He had been caught. So, you caught me the lictor emerged from its cover. So what now as the lector began retreating the hooks, he found his opportunity. He had his bolt raised and before the lictor could react, it was filled with holes. It had finally faced prey that fought back. As he ripped out the flesh hooks, he dug his chainsword into its face. Coward. Were you something that knew honor? You might have made this a lot quicker. The strike cruiser of Euro's hunt Ronna gazed at this helm. Today was the first test he had with it, and it passed. Tet Marie Nessel glanced up from his workshop. You have proven without a doubt that you found a suit from Asnibal's founding. Nothing we know of is even close to this speed. A work of art indeed, he seemed distant. It saved my life. No, that was you. 
Essel put down his project, a combi melter. You are a skilled leader, and one who follows his tenets. You are only as effective as the extent you use your tools, and this helmet is only the beginning. So it seems. Hey, what do you make of that with a space marine voice? I thought it was pretty cool, you know? And look, if the story's being told from the perspective of space marine, like, you know, how could I not? You know, I just it's just one of those ones I just had to had to do, you know? I thought it was pretty cool. But no, this one is a, it's a lot more of a serious story than what we're used to, you know? But I suppose it's a nice wee change of pace. Either way, look, I'm sure you guys will let me know what you thought of it down below. And look, you know, as always, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Be sure to like and subscribe to stay up to speed with any and all further videos. If you haven't already, check out my Redbubble portfolio. You might just find something you like. This, this is, is not okay. This needs to stop now. This is cancer. This, this is so much cancer that I can feel the tumors growing on my back. And it's way down heavy on me, and it's not okay. Can you help a nigga out and just stop this? Please?